Are you sick of brilliant microbrands yet? Well, if you are, it's probably time to give my channel a rest for a couple of months since I have some absolute stunners coming up. I'm starting right now, today, with the microbrand I've followed for a long time, Henry Archer. I admit, it's always extra fun to review a brand that hails from my neck of the woods. And whilst Henrik is Danish and I'm Swedish, it's been a long time since we were at war and we're all friends now. This is particularly important since when you've had a Karlsberg Hof in combination with the famous red hot dogs with roasted onions in Denmark, you'd want to come back and peacefully keep buying them. The reality is that the Swedes, Danes and Norwegians share a very similar approach to design as in sleek, minimalistic and no fuss. Sometimes that's perceived as boring, as in all white walls and cold lines, but when you're in Scandinavia, that is just the base. We are very good at ensuring we have both enough colour and enough light sources to ensure that during dark winters we enjoy spending time in our homes and public spaces. Danish designer Henrik Schutt, whose name literally translates to Henry Archer, which is a very clever way to find an easier name to take to an international audience, have a rather large collection of watch models, colours and even something as rare in the microbrand world as a line for women or simply those with smaller wrists and different tastes. It seemed to me that every time I saw a watch from the company, it was a different colour or slightly different design, and that is indeed unusual for a young brand. Today I have the Horizon Blue Nutzer model. This simply means North Sea, which is what lies between Britain and Scandinavia. It was what the Vikings had to cross to get the riches, so the model name has some meaning for a Danish brand. First impressions are very, very good. There are a couple small niggles that I'll point out in today's video, but if you're about to buy one and worry about something coming up that will change that, do not fret. We're all good here. And I hope you'll join me for the next eight minutes or so. I think we should get the price out of the way immediately since that may determine whether you're interested at all in a purchase. The Nutze comes with a two-year warranty and is currently on offer at an early bird price of $440. US I'll link up in the description. And full disclosure, Henrik is letting me keep the watch after review, but he has had no input in the review whatsoever other than answering my questions. So let's cover sizes first. We're looking at a 40mm diameter, 47mm like to lug, a 20mm lug width, and including the flat sapphire crystal 11mm thick. Since this is at heart a dive watch, we're getting 200m water resistance, and on this steel bracelet, it comes in at 142 gram, sized up for my wrist. So, in other words, pure perfection. Getting closer to the dial, I'm a big fan of this circular brush and the lovely blue shade chosen. My memories of the North Sea is everything from brooding grey to sometimes deep shades of blue and green. This is more of a Mediterranean shade of blue and green colours, but there's nothing wrong with that. So many logos are a bit jarring to look at, but not this one. A simple logo with no text that doesn't shout look at me is my preferred approach and this is such an example. It reminds me a little of a Pokemon or Japanese symbol and since we share a lot of the same design approach with Japan, that is totally okay. Moving down to the model name and water resistance, we get more crisp print and subtle enough blue and white. Incidentally, the O with a struck through is the same letter as the O with two dots in Swedish and it's pronounced ö uh, as in fern, and we pronounce o as in moon rather than nord. So if you want to show off your amazing multilingual skills to your friends, pronounce it as nord sir. Throughout the dial we get printed mini markers in blue and green, and the lives up what could perhaps be just another blue dial otherwise. The indices are all applied and has plenty of loom present, which I'll come back to. They are of a very high quality, and if I had a Tudor Black Bay lying around at the moment, I suspect they were on par quality-wise. Just check this out.
The semi-skeletonized hands are extremely legible, and the light blue lollipop seconds hand is no less visible thanks to its choice of color, loom, not to mention being so long. The white tip is definitely on a brave journey to the outer rim. Overall, I love this setup and in combination with a large but flat crown, there is a distinct black bay feel here without in any way copying or homaging set watch. Worth noting is that this crown differs on my watch to the one on the website photographs, and that's because it's the new Mark II crown, which will now be permanent on all new models, which is good since it's a great crown. Now the only problem for me here is the ceramic bezel. I love the print, it has excellent loom, it'll last forever being ceramic, but this is a dive watch and I can barely move it with dry hands, and as good as the cross hatch knurling looks, it offers almost no grip. If I was setting it quickly before jumping in the water, I wouldn't be setting it quickly since it's so incredibly tight. This needs work. I mentioned this to Henrik and he agreed. The next batch will have easier to turn vessels, so all good here. It's also flying pretty close to the sun with alignment. It's not way off at all, but it's also not exactly bang on 12 with this triangle. No doubt this is hard to achieve with such a sharp triangle. I think having a circular loom peep would possibly fix that, but I like the look of the triangle. I'm sure this will all be fixed for production and it feels almost petty to point it out since it's such a small margin we're talking about here. The case is excellent. The combination of chamfered edges and brush and polish is very attractive and its overall size makes this a sublime wear, at least on my wrist. One advantage of long slender lugs is that they look even better, to me anyway, with straps, but there's so much going on color-wise here that I think it should actually stay on steel. Speaking of steel, this oyster-style bracelet is both comfortable and wears well. It has female end links, so if you're at the edge of your wrist with a 47mm lug to lug, it'll drop straight off and it'll look great still. It is a pin and collar system, so short term pain means you'll never have to worry about screws coming out, but that first adjustment is obviously not as easy as screws. The excellent signed push release buckle has something pretty rare in this price range. A quick adjust system that is both reasonably smooth and very useful on hot cold days, not to mention clearly over a wetsuit. It also means that micro adjusts are super easy. It does require a fair amount of pressure to close, but other than that, punches way above its weight I'd say. On the back of the watch we get a full view of the Miyota 9039 with its 42 hour power reserve. The rotor is signed, and other than that, a pretty standard view of a mechanical movement. But never forget, normal people, and you're not one if you're watching this, will never not be amazed at the full view of a watch movement, and this is no exception. The Swiss Superluminova BGW9 Premium Grade Loom is breathtakingly good, and stays visible all night, particularly on the hands and indices, which is as it should be. I love what Henrik has done with all his watches and his brand in general. God knows that for the first 20 years in Australia, where I constantly gave my actual name like a sucker to every barista and had to have the same boring conversation about how you spell it and where I'm from, I wish I had caught on earlier to simply being Bob or John for my coffee. But how do you create a brand name that's connected to you without giving up your soul? Henry Archer is perfect as mentioned. The Nudzer is extremely attractive to my eyes. It comes in a range of colors from purple to black to everything in between. And if this particular model is not your favorite, then check out the many others that are even more fun than unusual without ever losing a distinct sense of style. 
I certainly hope to film more of his watches in future. The Aqua, for instance, looks super fun. But even more so, I hope you buy your very own and support this excellent brand. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.